found a grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus free, I am free, yes, free indeed. Well, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory. waves of glory roll. It is like a great overflowing well springing up within my soul. Well, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of waves of glory roll. It is like a great overflowing well springing up within my soul. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people come and dine. With his manna he does feed. He supplies our every need. Oh, tis sweet to sup with Jesus all the time. Come and dine, the master's calling. Come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table. Disciples came to land, thus obeying 
Christ's command, for the Master called to them, come and die. There they found their hearts desire, fret and fish upon the fire, thus he satisfied the hungry every time. Come and die, the Master calleth, come and die. You may feast at Jesus' table. saints in spotless white and with Jesus will feast eternally oh come and die master calleth come and die you may feast at Jesus table all the time you fed the multitude turn the water into wine to the hungry calleth now come and die soon All the saints in spotless white And with Jesus will feast eternally Oh, come and dine, the Master calleth, come and dine You may feast at Jesus' table all the time He who fed the multitude Turned the water into wine To the hungry calleth now, come and dine
Praise the Lord, everybody. Once again, it's Sunday morning church. So happy to be in the presence of the Lord with you, even virtually. I pray that you will be blessed in a mighty way. Could we begin this broadcast today with prayer? Father, I pray that you would meet with us even as you have promised in your word. As we gather together in your name, let your presence be felt, make your presence known. And speak into every heart today that love and that great determination that you would place in every life to bring us unto you in a greater way. I pray in Jesus' name, bless and anoint your word today. Amen. If you'll turn with me in the book of Matthew chapter 11, verse 7 through 12, I'm preaching today on this subject, violence that brings victory. As they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went you out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went you out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. But what went you out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet, for this is he of whom it was written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verse 11 of Matthew 11 continues, Verily, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Jesus declared that his cousin John was greater than any of the prophets in the day in which he lived. But he only heralded the coming of the Christ. He saw, speaking of John the Baptist, he saw the dawn of a new day. But Jesus said the least of the Savior's disciples was greater by being in the kingdom of Christ and sharing in the blessings of his reign. John went forth and obeyed and was baptized. Great multitudes heard and obeyed, and they were baptized. The people, especially publicans and harlots and outcasts, pressed into the kingdom of God. So today, first of all, I would make this statement that the violence that presses into the kingdom of God is essential. It is so necessary. And by violence, we understand that to be the moral energy and the fire, the passion. The idea is that of a person pressing through a crowd. Luke 16, 16 says the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man presseth into it or it gives us the idea it conjures up the mental picture of an army storming a gate I tell you that we are living in a time this very day in which we as the church of the living God need to come together join together in the power of the Holy Ghost and press our way into victory, the kingdom of this world, and the stresses and the pressures and the onslaught of this world cannot defy with victory the kingdom of God. 
I tell you that the gates of hell shall not prevail against Jesus Christ and his kingdom. The Christians must use force. Listen carefully to my words as I preach today. If a wrestler must use force when he is grappling with his opponent, then we must also, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers of the air and spiritual wickedness in high places. If the warrior must use force when the army comes against him, then so must we use force because there are regiments of the enemy between us and spiritual victory. If the pris prisoner, if the prisoner must use force when he wants to tear off the chains that bind him, then we must use victory that comes through force because the fetters of evil and our evil nature and the evil nature of this world bind us to this earth. But Jesus said, I came to set at liberty them that are captive. He wants to give us freedom, but we've got to be willing to use the force of God's violence against it. Continue to hear. If the traveler must use force when there are mountains to be scaled, heights to be climbed, then we must use force. For a rugged land is before us, and the rocks and the torrents of raging rivers block our path. Or perhaps you are the plaintiff in the courtroom of this earth. And plaintiffs in our natural courtrooms often have to use force, the force of persuasive arguments, the force of earnest entreaty becomes essential for the Christian, for the individual that says, I must have a greater place in the kingdom of God. I want to reach higher. I want to go farther. I want to be greater of use in the kingdom of God. So therefore, as a plaintiff in the courtroom of our day, we must use the force of earnest entreaty unwearied solicitation if necessary and it will be burning tears and passionate cries when we would gain the favor from the one that's sitting as the judge then we're going to have to use force we must pray always and not faint we must besiege the mercy seat seeing that all that we need must come from God. Earnest supplications in, is the condition upon which God bestows his blessing and his favor. Think for a moment the violence that's experienced in nature. Baby chickens, Baby ducks, etc., baby birds, they all have to use a mighty force. They have to become violent to even be brought into this world. It's not an easy struggle that these little creatures go through, but they persist because they know if they can continue struggling, they will break through and come forth into a new life with new vitality and new power. Oh, Christian friend of mine today, I tell you that there's a breakthrough coming for the saint of God, for the people of God that are willing to force and use violence 
to break through the shell that holds them in because God wants you to have the freedom and the liberty in his presence. Violence that's necessary to secure the blessings of salvation is in fact something that has to be considered ever so closely. This violence includes a determined resolve as opposed to a hot and cold vacillating inconstancy never having fully determined or made up our mind I tell you that there must be something that gets hold of us that says I've made up my mind I am determined I'm going to press my way through the crowd I'm going to, to borrow the cliche from the Bible touch the hem of his garment I'm going to press through until victory comes from Jesus Christ Almighty. Consider the rich young man. Mark chapter 10 verse 17. When he was gone forth into the way. Talking about Jesus. There came one. A rich young man. Running and kneeled down to him. And asked him. Good master. What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him. Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. Verse 20, Mark 10. And he answered and said unto him, Listen, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, the Bible says he loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, that rich young man, he was sad. He went away grieved, for he had great possessions. Many people resolve, and then they re-resolve, and yet they do not advance. Their resolves, their resolutions are like the morning cloud and the early dew. It's like vapor. It vanishes away. They say they will go into the vineyard, but they don't go. That's procrastination, and it has become the ruin of thousands upon thousands over time. To attain the blessings of the gospel, there must be a determination to force forward. There must be a determinate violence, a vehement decision that says, I'm going to press through this crowd I must touch Jesus you've got to make up your mind you have to set your heart and you have to let it consume you until a determination for victory fills your soul the psalmist said in 57 verse 7 my heart is fixed O God my heart is fixed I will sing and give praise. Psalm 112 verse 7. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. Who? Who is it that has the heart that is fixed? A good man. This violence includes self-denial. In opposition to ease. Self-indulgence. Nature loves ease, apathy, self-indulgence. But Christ demands mortification. That's killing yourself. Self-denial, cross-bearing. When I say killing yourself, we have to be willing to die. 
It sounds a little better. I'll even put it within the framework of Scripture. Paul said, I die daily. Oh, the cost, the cost for victory is not a small price. It's a great price. It may require any of these issues or all of them. Mortification, self-denial, cross-bearing. No man should enter a wrestling competition with his arms folded. No one would compete in the Olympics without strict and rigid training regimens. We are to strive to enter in at the straight gate. Have you really considered that, my brother? That we must strive. The word strive literally means to agonize. You're going to make it in. You're going to have to really put forth some effort. Self must be chased out of all of its retreats and hideaways. The old man must be crucified if Christ is going to benefit you at all. I read you just now the words to an old hymn of the church that asks this question. Am I a soldier of the cross, a follower of the lamb, and shall I fear to own his cause or blush to speak his name? Must I be carried to the skies on flowery beds of ease while others fought to win the prize and sailed through bloody seas? Are there no foes for me to face? Must I not stem the flood? Is this vile world a friend to grace to help me on to God? Sure, I must fight if I would reign in Increase my courage, Lord. I'll bear the toil, endure the pain, supported by thy word. Thy saints in all this glorious war shall conquer, though they die. They see the triumph from afar, thy faith's discerning eye. When that illustrious day shall rise, and all thy armies shine, in robes of victory through skies, the glory shall be thine. And the question remains, am I a soldier of the cross? The violence that I speak about today includes a focused heart. Oswald Smith wrote in one of his books, and he made this statement that the man of God will always be a man of one purpose. We get so divided nowadays. We have so many pursuits. Instead of following hard after Christ, often we're chasing rabbits through many of their little rabbit trails. This violence that I speak about is something that God would find in us when we seek him with the whole heart. James 1, 6, verse 6 through 8. He that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Have you made up your mind to serve the Lord? I make an appeal to you, my unbaptized friend. Maybe you've not really participated in the church. Maybe you've never come to seek the Lord deeply in your life, but there's been a curiosity in your heart. I urge you today 
to take a giant step beyond mere curiosity and begin to get violent in your pursuit of the Lord Jesus Christ. There must be a resolution, a self-denial, a concentrated effort. Every faculty and feeling must enter in your pursuit of finding the Lord Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy 4.29, If from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Deuteronomy 10.12, And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul. And I have found in the book of Matthew, the book of Mark, and the book of Luke, three, the first three gospels of your New Testament in your Bible. I have found a similar statement that is made the first two, Matthew and Mark, were made by the Lord Jesus. And the third in the book of Luke was made by a young man that came to Jesus inquiring of how he might find victory in our Savior. They all had a very similar statement. Listen to them as I read them, Matthew 22 and 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Mark 12, 30. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and something is added, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And in Luke, the young man responded to, the, to Jesus as he made inquiry what he had to do to inherit eternal life. And he answered the Lord with these words, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, because Jesus had asked, What does the scripture say? And this young man said, Well, this is what I know that it says. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind. And then he adds something to it. And thy neighbor as thyself. There has to be an all-consuming, complete, total resolution of the heart and the mind and the soul. A giving of the strength that is involved when you really desire the Lord Jesus, when you are pursuing him. I'll tell you a story from the Bible to emphasize this point. David is coming home in Jerusalem to the city of David, and Michael, his wife, that's King Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David. I'm reading from 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 16. She saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. It was okay for him to be king in her thoughts, but he had to act like a king according to, to her desire. But David was acting like a worshiper who just happened to be the king. Whether you're a king or whether you're a pauper, everyone needs to worship God with the completeness and fullness of their heart, mind, body, soul, strength. So Michael, his wife, despised him. Then David returned 
to bless his household. I might interject here, my friend, that when you are a worshiper of Jesus Christ, you will become a blessing to your household. You can add blessing to your leadership in the home. Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, oh, how glorious, I'm reading, how glorious was the king of Israel today who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovereth himself. In other words, his dancing and his leaping in the presence of the Lord, sometimes his long robe no doubt was flowing, perhaps billowing outward and she thought that that was unseemly and he was revealing himself in an unpleasant way. David said unto Michael, it was before the Lord which chose me before thy father and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore, will I play before the Lord. Listen now. And I will yet be more vile than thus and will be base in mine own sight and of the maidservants which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be had in honor. I can stop this story there because it is finished except for one statement. It has nothing to do with dancing or leaping before the Lord. But it has everything to do with God's displeasure at Michael's response to David as a worshiper. For the Bible says, therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child until the day of her death. She was barren for all of her life. What was that all about? Basically, David told Micah, Michael, if you think that was something that you saw me doing today, honey, you ain't seen nothing yet. You keep your eyes on me. I'm going to dance more. And I'm going to shout louder. And I'm going to pray harder. I'm going to do more than you've ever seen before. That sounds like a man that was violent. That sounds like a man that was using force to find himself close by the side of our Lord. When you want to serve Christ... You hear this preacher this morning when I tell you, you've got to give it everything you've got. When you're serving, serve him with all of your heart. When you're praising, praise him with all of your mind. When you give him glory, give him glory with all of your might. Oh, my friend, there's no half stop. There's no three quarter way to worship. Worship God with everything you've got. The violence includes ardent, fervent prayer. Hungering, thirsting, panting, fainting. The psalmist said in Psalm 63, 8, My soul followeth hard after thee. I like the, I like the message translation of that statement. It says, I hold on to you for dear life, and you hold me steady as a post. There must and will be importunity, troublesome, urgent, overly persistent in request or demand. We need, we must, in order to pursue with all of our heart, we will be knocking, seeking, asking, crying out, pleading, persevering, the throne of God must be stormed, holding on to the horns of the altar, knocking on the gates of heaven. 
Oh, we've got an urgent mission, and that's to be closer to Christ and to be used more completely in his kingdom, to be ready and prepared at his bidding and his call to do whatsoever he requires. This violence is urged by Christ in the parable of the importunate widow, Luke 18, 1 through 8. He spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying there's a city, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her, look at the word, continual coming, she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God judge his, avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. This violence is exemplified in the story of the Syrophoenician woman. Matthew 15, 22 through 28. Behold, a woman of Canaan cried unto him, saying, have mercy on me, O Lord. Thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. <laughs> my friend, that's where we are today. We're at a place where we need God to help us. This world is not really going to offer much help to us. They have government programs. They have government possibilities for your assistance and your help. But the help for the inner man, the help for sleeping at night, the help for peace in your soul, it comes from God. She worshiped him and then cried, Lord, help me. Lord, help. how long, my friend, has it been since you asked God to help you? I tell you today, that's the best thing that you could do on this weekend is to find a place where you lift your voice, you lift your heart, and you say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me with every problem I've got. The giant problems on my job, the small, tiny problems with my vehicle, my problems with my finances, my problems with my children, my problems with their school, my problems in the family. God, help me. Lord, help me. But Jesus answered the Syrophoenician woman who just asked for help. And he said, it is not meet. The word here would be appropriate. It is not appropriate to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Verse 27, and she said, Lord, that's the truth. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. I just want to stop right there and point out to all of us that in this affluent age, when so many of us are involved in struggles against overindulgence in so many things, including eating, she said, I will be content with crumbs that fall from your table. You see, she had a faith and an understanding 
that with the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't have to have a full sandwich to satisfy you. One touch of his hand can turn your whole life around. One touch of his hand can heal you and make you completely whole. This violence that I speak of today is manifested finally in conclusion by the struggling of Jacob. Let me just give you a brief overview. Jacob who is a type of the spiritual man, has always struggled with Esau, who is a type of carnal man. Even from the womb, there's never been a moment when the flesh and the spirit have lived in compatible conditions. Genesis 25, 22, and 3, children, that's Jacob and Esau, struggled together within her, within their mother's womb. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? If I am pregnant, why is this happening to me? And she went to inquire of the Lord. The word struggling means to crack in pieces, to break, to bruise, to crush, to oppress, to struggle together. Genesis 32, 24 through 28, Jacob was left alone. Now, I just jumped about 25 years, approximately. Jacob has grown up, left home, where he had deceived and cheated his brother Esau out of the birthright. He had to flee for his life. He's been gone and working as a partner in the, being a shepherd to his uncle Laban's sheep in the land of Haran. But now with his wives, his two wives, their children, Jacob's coming home. And he's been told that his brother Esau whom he had cheated some 25 years earlier, is now just over the horizon with 300 armed men. Jacob sent his family on ahead, and he went off into a little meadow by himself at nighttime. And Verse 24 of Genesis 32 says, Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. When he saw that he prevailed not against him, the man touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And the man said, let me go, for the day breaketh. And Jacob said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. He said unto him, what is thy name? He said, Jacob. And he said, that's the man, the theophany of God. He said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for as a prince thou hast power with God and with men and hast prevailed. All of his life, Jacob had been a taker. Even from his mother's womb, he stretched forth his little chubby hand and took hold of his brother Esau's foot by the heel. He was called the heel grabber. This man, the angel of God or God in a human body that wrestled against Jacob, touched the socket of his thigh and it was wrenched out of joint. Thigh is the pillar of man's strength. 
its joint with the hip is the seat of physical force for the wrestler. You let the thigh bone be thrown out of joint and the man is utterly disabled. So now Jacob finds that this mysterious wrestler has forcibly taken from him by one touch all his might and Jacob can no longer stand alone without any support whatsoever from himself. Jacob hangs on to his opponent who is conquering him. And in that condition, he learns by experience the practice of what reliance on one can be who is mightier than himself. This is the turning point in this strange drama. From here on out, Jacob feels himself strong, not in himself, but in the Lord and in the power of his might. I'm concluding, but I want to tell all of us here today that God can overthrow all the power of the self-reliance. God can overthrow all of your independent nature. God can overthrow all of that, but it requires that he break you. But when you're willing to humble yourself, yield yourself, give yourself, surrender, wave the white flag before Christ. I tell you, God cannot resist the earnest cry of the helpless soul that says, I have become violent with you. And now even my own strength has failed me. In that purpose. But I cling to you. I cling to you Lord. I can't stand on my own. My hip is out of joint. I am weak and ready to fall. But I'm leaning on you Lord. And you will hold me up. I'm counting on it. I'm counting on it. Lord Jesus, today, by the eye of faith, we're looking out across a virtual audience. And we know that there are some who are ready to fall. They have been touched so mightily that they are completely imbalanced. They're about to fall. But Lord, I'm encouraging them today. I want you to help them to lean on you. Pull them in close to your breast. Hold them tightly. Don't let them fall, but oh God, help them to learn to lean on you. Help them to learn to trust in you. Since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffereth violence. And the violent taken by force. I pray for each and every one of these dear people here at Calvary Tabernacle that they become violent in pursuing the presence of Christ and his kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you, my friend. If you'll refer to the end of this video. You may call Pastor Mason or Pastor Wilson. We will help you. We will pray with you. We will teach you a Bible study. We will talk with you about your soul's needs. We're here to help you. May God bless you today. In Jesus' name. Good night. Death could not hold you. Church. <laughs>